all here today. There we go. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Those of you online, we appreciate you for tuning in. My name is Gabriel Cabrera. I'm a member of the Dream Team here at Celebration Church, and I'm just here to go ahead and run through a couple of quick announcements and reminders before we get into the worship. Uh, first off are our Connect cards. In the back of each and every seat, there's a small blue card that is our Connect card. If you've decided to dedicate your life to Christ, to rededicate your life to Christ, or if you'd like to partner with us in prayer by submitting a prayer request, you can just fill it out on that card and drop it into one of the two black boxes near the entrance doors. Now, we're not gonna harass you or try to blow up your phone or come by your house or anything, but here at Celebration Church, we believe that everyone should have someone to walk with them in their walk with Christ. We wanna support you in the best way that we can. And the way that we do that is through our connect card. So if you'd like to connect with us, go ahead and fill that out and drop it in one of the two black boxes. Next up is our text and church service. If you'd like to keep up with the things we've got going on here at Celebration Church, the different events we've got going on, you can text 662-297-7435. That is our number. Text the word celebrate to 662-297-7435. And again, we're not gonna blow up your phone, we're not gonna harass you. We just wanna kinda keep you up to date with what we've got going on here at Celebration Church. All right, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving, but now that Thanksgiving is finished up, we can finally, officially start Christmas season. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for it. I love Christmas time. And along with Christmas season comes Celebration Church's Christmas Outreach, which is a program we do each and every year. We just want to gather up money to support a couple of the families in our area that may not be able to really put together their Christmas. Uh, we, do, we usually do two families, one within the church and one outside of it, but we're actually aiming a little higher this year. We're going to try to go for three families just to go ahead and support them and try to give them a good Christmas. So if you'd like to contribute towards that, there's an envelope in the back of each seat beside the Connect cards, and on that envelope you can place your offering inside, and there should be a place on the envelope to mark that marks it specifically for Christmas outreach. To those of you online, through our online giving service, there will be a box you can click to mark it for Christmas outreach. And again, that will just go to some families in our area so we can support them and try to give them a Merry Christmas. And as we get into Christmas time, I would just like to, even outside of the church, just kind of remind us that 
we really need to be showing the love of Christ through our service and giving towards others. This time, more than any other, you know, there's a lot of potential during Christmas time to reach people for Christ, to really show people that love. So I kind of recommend that we all just really go forward and try to embody that this season. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer and we can get into worship time. Father God, we want to say thank you for this opportunity to meet in your house today. Thank you, Father, for the freedom we have to honor you and to love you openly. We pray, Father, that we'd never squander this opportunity. Be in our hearts today, open our minds to your word, and may your will be done above all else for your glory and your glory alone. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you will, join us as we sing about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
rejoice. Cause rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. So I come to feel is right. So I come, so I come to feel is right. So I come to feel is Let's go back to that rejoice. Rejoice again. Praise. He's worthy. i 
All my works fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw up, so I throw up my hands, and I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah I've got one I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you So I throw up, so I throw up my hands And I praise you again and again Oh, cause all that I
nothing else fit for a king. Oh, just help for a heart singing. Hallelujah. heaven to save us and that all that we have all that you want is our hearts and so father I pray right now if there's anyone here today if there's anyone watching on the live stream this morning God you can save at the beginning of the service you can save in the middle of the service and you can save at the end and so father I just pray that if there's anyone that is hearing my voice today God, and they don't have a relationship with you. They haven't surrendered. They haven't said, Jesus, I need you to be my Savior. I repent of my sin. Father, I don't want to be the king of my heart anymore. I want you, Jesus, to be the king of my heart. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would just give them the faith, the gift of faith that they need to believe in your Son. So come and have your way this morning, Holy Spirit. 
come and have your way on our hearts and on our minds. Renew our minds through your word this morning in Jesus' name. So as we get closer and closer to, to Christ's birth, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an Advent reading each week until uh, we get into that point of Christ's birth. And then we're going to light these Advent candles. And, of course, we saved the last one, uh, the pink one for Jesus at the very end. So you may be seated. I know some of y'all are tired. You're like, man, I thought we were just going to, celebrate all morning you know maybe we should sometimes but we are celebration church for a reason we're not like hey we just sit in the chairs and quietly praise although that's okay too but we're going to be reading this morning out of uh, John the book of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 18 if you want to turn they're going to put it up on the screen uh, if our screens are working this morning and by the way I'm Matt I'm the pastor here at celebration church you're the lead pastor this is my lovely wife, Tammy. She's going to read first, and then I'm going to read second. So out of John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's good news this morning, in case you were wondering who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because He was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Man, that's another sermon right there. Grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known.
except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So, Lord, I pray, Father, that that we will raise our hands, Lord, not not of anything else except for surrender to you, Lord. And praise, Lord, for what you've done for us. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you will help us, Lord, dig deeper into the meaning of gratitude, Father, and what that means, Father. To truly appreciate who you are, what, you, what you've done, and what you're continuing to do, Lord, in and throughout our lives, Lord. So, Father, as we, as we reflect, Lord, how you have come down, Father, and lived among us, Lord. Lord, fill our hearts with gratitude, Lord. Fill our hearts with thankfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is the video not in there? Is it not, is it not cooperating? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Pastor BJ. It's good, so, so great to see you. I love it when technology does not work. That's sarcasm, for those of you who don't, under, don't know that. Kids, there's a wonderful thing called sarcasm that you can use that when you can say one thing but totally mean the opposite. But I want to encourage you as you learn to use it, do not use it with your parents. Because uh, Pastor BJ is telling you right now, don't do that. Um, if any of my former band students are watching online today or later, I got a couple here. They know that I'm really good at using sarcasm, and but they, they still can't figure it out. Some of them are like, I think I got you figured out, BJ. And then I say something like that, no, they don't. So we were supposed to have a video playing to kind of make the transition, uh, but we, like Matt said in his uh, while ago, uh, the, if the projectors were working, for some reason it feels like when it gets Christmas time, that's when our projectors and all of our technology says, nah, I'm going to take a break too. And I don't get it. So anyways, on behalf of our faith family, thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us. If you're online with us, we are so glad that you are with us. You could have chosen to watch anything else on Facebook, but you've decided to watch with us. We're glad for that. Um, as Pastor Matt and Miss Amy did, they read through our scripture for the day, and it's actually on your sermon notes. And speaking of which, you should have gotten a copy of them when you came in. This is so you can kind of follow along. Uh, if you've been with us here lately, you'll notice that there's a whole big side over here that says notes that's a lot larger than it has been. That's because I don't have very many points today. So you guys are probably like, yes, BJ, you're not going to take us to school and be here for like a whole time. Well, that's just because I think this scripture that they read today is going to tie in, and there's only a few points I want to go through. But if you did not get a copy of those, you can just kind of raise your hand. And one of our dream teamers, Miss Michelle, uh, she's got a couple. She can just walk up, just kind of like a little on the down low and slide it to you and say, here you go. Um, thank you for that reading. Thank you for worship team for the songs I loved Every single song that the worship team did today. How about you guys? Let's give them, a, let's give them some applause, man. I, I believe in giving them honor because they work hard. They, they give up of a Saturday after Thanksgiving to put together a worship set so that we can worship God. So that we can join together. But I love the flow of that because it starts off with what's become one of my favorite Advent. It's actually an Advent song, although we do it for Christmas. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Like, it's become one of my favorite ones because... Um, may, maybe maybe I'm weird, but I, I like some of those Christmas carols that kind of have that darker, haunting melody that is kind of, hmm, it's not real cheery and bright, but it's like, but I love it because it expresses this longing that the children of Israel would have, ex, would have experienced as they were waiting for the birth of the Messiah. That we, 2,000 years later, we are still experiencing that longing as we wait for the day that Jesus comes back and takes us home to be with him. It's that longing, it's like, come, oh come, Emmanuel, and rescue your children. And then what's the next song? We go from Emmanuel, which means God with us, saying, hey, God, come be with us, to 
you are here. You're holy. You are God with us right now. And then what do we do in response to that? We throw up our hands and we express our gratitude. I love how that just flowed. Because it gets us in this mindset this season of what really we should be focusing on. It's not about the toys. It's not about, you know, let Thanksgiving leftovers being turned into other dishes for Christmas. Which, by the way, if you take leftover turkey from Thanksgiving and you're serving it on Christmas Day, you might have a medical issue coming up. I mean, po- as long as you freeze it. Thanks, Josh. I mean, food poison if you don't take care of it right. But it's the idea, like, that's the whole thing. It's, it's really about... This season of Advent is about preparing for the coming of Jesus. It's remembering his birth and preparing for his second coming. So each week, like Pastor Matt said, we're going to have a different reading. And each week has a theme with it. Um, The four themes for Advent are hope, love, joy, and peace. And today is hope. And that's going to tie into our message. Normally, every year, we do a ser- we've done a sermon series for the past, I don't know, Matt, Pastor Matt, it's been about four or five years, maybe. Uh, we've been in, in existence for seven, going on eight. But we've taken a Christmas carol, and we've broken down the verses and the courses, and we've looked at uh, the scriptural background for those. This year, we decided to do something a little different. All right, by we, I mean me, because they, they said, BJ, you get to choose the the sermon series this Christmas. I'm like, all right. Show of hands, how many people in here love Christmas movies? Love Christmas movies. Come on, if you're online, give us some hands up emojis, yell it out. Uh, what are some of your favorite ones? Just, just come on, this is crowd interaction. Tell me some of your favorite ones. Home Alone, Frosty, The Grinch. Oh, all right, all right, which version of The Grinch? Like the animated one, the Jim Carrey one, or the Benedict Cumberbatch one? All right, so my brother says, yes, what? Jim Carrey, look, if you're going to give me the rank those, like, I love Benedict Cumberbatch, I love Sherlock, but I'm just going to tell you, that one, to my opinion, that Grinch was trash. To quote Trey, it was trash. Look, you go old school original, because you got to have the old school, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, I can't get that low. But then Jim Carrey comes in, and you're just like, wow, because Jim Carrey, there's nobody else who could do it. My fa- I, have, I have two Christmas movies that I really, really love. One of them is Ernest Saves Christmas. And my wife, a couple weeks ago, ordered it on Amazon and gave it to me. And I'm, I'm guarantee you, we're going to watch that this Christmas. Because I love it. My favorite line, he's with the elves up on, they're flying around out of control. Ah! They freeze up above the earth's atmosphere. And he goes, nobody moves, nobody dies. Huh? Huh? And the little elf goes, achoo! And they just plummet to their deaths. No, they don't. Go watch a movie. My second one, and I don't care who, I don't care what your argument is, I, this is a Christmas movie, Die Hard. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. In my opinion, how can you take place at Christmas and not be a Christmas movie? All right, I say all that to say we're not going to look at Die Hard. We're not going to look at Ernest Saves Christmas. But the point is, is everybody's got a favorite Christmas movie. And if you look close enough at some of these Christmas movies that are classics, you can find gospel themes and gospel messages in each one in fact this series we're calling christmas at the movies christmas at the movies and we're going to take four movies these next four weeks and we're going to look at how the gospel message shows up in there Uh, in fact the main idea for this the gist of this series is i gotta find it in my notes i lost it there's so much so much is this is that the, incar- the incarnation, which basically simply means Christ, God putting on flesh, that it is such a major part for us. It's a huge doctrine that we want to look at, and we want to see how these movies can help us understand that. So what we're going to look at, first and foremost, is probably my mom's favorite Christmas movie. She has two of them as well. One of them is It's a Wonderful Life. The other one is this one. And in fact, we're going to show you a video clip, if it's going to cooperate. We're going to show you a little video clip from the newest one, from the newer one from 1994, because I think it will help us understand a little bit about the incarnation and what we want to talk today about. So let's, let's view this clip. Hello, little one. How are you? Uh, Come. Wow. Uh, she's deaf. You don't have to talk to her. She just wanted to see you. You are a 
very beautiful young lady. <laughs> What's your name? Sammy. That's a beautiful name. <laughs> now, I tell you what. Do you know Jingle Bell? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Darling, what would you like for Christmas? A doll and a bear when you shall have them. Sammy, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. In case you don't know, that's from the movie... Miracle on 34th Street. That's from the 1994 remake. Now, I'll, I will be completely candid and upfront with you. I like the original better. <laughs> I think the original, black and white, even, even when the, the remastered color version, it is, to me it's superior because they do a better job of telling the story. But I like this clip from the movie. Here's why. We see Santa talking and communicating with a girl who's deaf. Okay. What's interesting to me is that the actor who played Santa, which, by the way, is also in the first uh, Jurassic Park movie, so Santa likes, he likes dinosaurs. Let's just go with that, okay? But Santa, the actor who was playing him, had told the directors that he didn't want this little girl, um, didn't want the little girl rehearsing with him for this part. The little girl in the movie, she actually is deaf. She cannot hear. So when the mom puts her on her, his knee, basically all the little girl was expecting was just, just to be there sitting on his knee. She was basically told, you're just going to sit here and we're going to get it. She had no idea what was about to happen. Because the actor took time to learn sign language so that he could communicate with this little girl. So when she, he starts signing and says, you're, and you see her face, you, you, know, you look at her, she's just kind of like this. And then all of a sudden she lights up. It's because she did not know that he was going to talk to her in her language. I love that. If you go watch the original 1947 version, the scene plays out different. There's a girl who, who only speaks Dutch. And so the mother tells her, you know, she can't understand you. She's from... Then all of a sudden Santa just starts talking to her in her real language. And that kind of brings me to the point that I want to kind of talk about today in today's message. Because if you look at John chapter 1 verse 1, what did, what did it say? It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if you jump down to verse 14, what does it tell us there? It says that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. That's where I'm going to pause on that one. Because if you don't know the story of Miracle on 34th Street, warning alert, spoilers, Santa, the real Santa, comes during Thanksgiving and ends up becoming the Santa in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Throughout the story, he meets a little girl named Susan. That was a little girl who's kind of watching, and Santa winked at her, and she's like hiding. She's a skeptic. She's been taught all of her life by her mother, Doris, that Santa is not real. That's what she's been taught. And so here comes Santa, and Santa basically through the whole movie is doing things that are not natural, that can only be explained by supernatural, and can only be explained if he is really Santa, right? So the whole movie goes throughout that, and there's a big court case. My mom loves it because the judge just looks at, at the prosecutor and goes, overruled. That's in the original. Go check it out. And there's this climax where they find out that Chris Kringle, that's his name, is Santa Claus. They prove him to be Santa Claus. And here's what is cool. Here's what's interesting and how it ties into our message today. Chris Kringle 
is a figure that's representative of Christ. In fact, Chris Kringle comes from the German word uh, Chris Kendall, which Martin Luther, the great reformer, him, him and his associates put this together because they were trying to discourage people from, uh, from St. Nicholas and, and holding him up to high esteem because they believed that really you should only be praying to God because you know, back then the Catholics would pray to, the, to different uh, saints and things like that, asking them. And the Reformation came up and they said, no, we want to believe in Jesus Christ only. And so they came up with this Chris, uh, Chris Kendall, which eventually became Chris Kringle. So there's your, little, there's your little bit of trivia for you there. Chris Kringle basically is supposed to be a representative of Christ. And what happens is Christ, like Chris Kringle, comes in an unexpected way. He came to his own, and they didn't realize that it was him. And that brings us kind of to our first point. That number one, that God chose to relate to us in a unique way by becoming a part of his own creation. God chose to relate to us in a unique way by becoming a part of his own creation. Just like Chris Kringle came as an old man, he just looked like a regular old man walking around. Christ came down. He was God. He put on flesh. That's what incarnate means. It means he put on flesh. He became human so he could be among us. That's literally what Emmanuel means, is God with us. And when you read in John chapter 1, verse 14, where it says he's made his dwelling among us, that phrase literally means he tabernacled with us. And when you're a Jewish reader and who's reading this, it takes you back and references you back to the Old Testament days when the children of Israel were wandering around in the desert and they had the tabernacle, which was the physical representation of the presence of God. So when John writes that the word, the Logos, Jesus Christ came and he put on flesh and made his dwelling, he tabernacled among us, he's saying that God in Jesus is here. But here's what's interesting. It was a different way than most people expected. So let's, let, let's do a little, little response, a little interaction again. When you think Jesus, just Jesus, period, what's one of the first things that kind of comes to your mind? Normally, Jesus. Creator. Cross. Most people think of the miracles, the story. We kind of gloss over Jesus as a baby until it's Christmas time. But here's the thing. When you think about Jesus as a baby, what comes to mind? The manger. The wise men, the shepherds, the star. But what about Jesus as a baby? When you think of babies, what do you think of? Crying, helpless, defenseless. The chubby cheeks, sorry, some of the chubby cheeks. Here's the point. The all-powerful, mighty God of all creation when you go read in Philippians, it tells you that Jesus put aside being equal with the Father and humbled himself and took on flesh. He came down as a baby. The all-powerful God said, I'm going to come down as a helpless baby who needs protection with his mother and father. Because here's the thing, if you read the Christmas story and go on to it, you're going to find that Herod sent some people to kill him. I mean, I'm going to tell you, a baby to a two-year-old can't protect themselves from an army. You have to have protection. But you know why he did this? He became dependent and vulnerable. On pe he became dependent on people so that he can relate to us 100%. Because he is 100% God and what? 100% human. We forget about that sometimes. So this is unique. Why is it unique? Because everybody in the old, everybody in first century, all the Jewish people in the first century, they were looking for a king to come who would kick Roman rule out of Jerusalem. They were looking for somebody to come in, all powerful, basically kind of speaking, saying, "Hey, you're dead," and all of a sudden, all the all the Roman guards would just drop dead because the lightning strikes. That's what they were looking for, kind of like Gandalf showing up. And uh, looking at the bell rock, bell rock, man, 
Lord of the Rings, I'm being nerdy for a minute. He's like, you shall not pass. Boom. Shatters the bridge. The enemy falls. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who would be this all-powerful, snap your fingers like Thanos, smite half the Roman Empire, gone. That's not how he did it. He came down as what? A little baby. He came down to know what it's like to be a kid, trying to grow, he, trying to grow up in a blended family. He, he might have been referred to as Joseph's son in the natural, but in, he, he really was the son of God. So Joseph, in effect, was a stepdad. So maybe you're a part of a blended family, and you feel like sometimes, maybe you're a child in a blended family, and you're like, I don't know if anybody understands. I don't know if anybody can relate. Guess what? Jesus can relate. Maybe you're feeling like you've been abandoned. Guess what? Jesus knows what it feels like to be abandoned. Maybe you find yourself dependent on somebody else to help you out. Guess what? As a baby, Jesus had to depend on Mary and Joseph to take care of him. He chose to communicate to us in a unique way by becoming a part of his creation. Brings me to my next point, number two. God communicates in unexpected ways. God communicates in unexpected ways. He chooses to interact in a unique way by becoming, coming down into our world and relating to us, but he also communicates in a, new, a different way. Like I told you, that little girl had no idea that Chris Kringle was going to make do sign language and talk to her. She was just sitting there on his lap, just there. How many of us have had similar experiences that we come, we go to, the, we go to church, we come to where, where God's going to be, and you know we expect to see God move. We expect, to, but we don't. Sometimes we, I think we don't expect Him to communicate and move in our lives. I, I'll be honest with you. Like I have times where I've had times. I still do sometimes where I go to a service and I see people just getting touched. I see them all engaging in worship, and, and there are times that I'm just like, man, God, I know you're speaking to that person. You're speaking to that person in a mighty way. I, I, wish, I wish I could hear you, but here's the thing. God does. God still does that. If we want to hear from him, what we need to do is we need to take time, make time, actually, to slow down, get in his word, and being quiet and just listen to his voice. I was listening to a podcast about a week or two ago. And it, it, the idea of the podcast was a teaching about being defined by the Father's voice. And they gave uh, an exercise that they gave was to take some time and just say, basically talk to God and say, all right, God, what is it you want to say? What is it you feel about me? What do you say about me? And then just be quiet and write whatever comes in your mind. Because if we really expect God to speak, guess what? He will speak. He speaks even when we don't expect it. We just got to learn to hear it. So I did that, and I'm writing down. I'm like, all right, God, what do you want? And I just started writing some things down, and I'm like, and sometimes I'm, I'm like, that sounds like my inner voice, but guess what? Sometimes God will talk to your inner voice, but here's the great thing. Anything, anything that God tells you, though, will not go against Scripture. Okay? So sometimes in your quiet moments, you're like, God, I need some help. God may give you... A passage of scripture. Write it down. Go check out and see what it is. He expects, so he communicates in unexpected ways. Like I said, they weren't expecting him to come as a, ba uh, as a baby. They wanted a king who would kick them out. What does John 1.11 say? It says, he came down to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. They did not recognize him. Like I said, they were expecting something huge, but he came small. Sometimes I want God to do big things. I want God to speak with a voice that shakes the room. Boom. I want God to say, BJ, this is the way you're supposed to go. Hey, hey, guess what? Take this job. We, I, want the, I want the clear, boom, 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 this is it. There's no doubt. But if you go check out Scripture in 1 Kings, 
chapter 19, you'll find that sometimes God doesn't speak that way. Let's look at that. This is the prophet Elijah. I mean, Elijah just had a massive throwdown with the prophets of Baal. Uh, we talked about this in our series last year. Last year, the Stranger Things series, where we had this prophet off, pretty much. They're showing down. You got one prophet that gets 450. God shows up, consumes it. It's a great victory, and all of a sudden, he, hear, he kills all the prophets. Says, how oh, you're leading people astray. Like, God is supreme. Yahweh is the way you go. Prophets of Baal, you're false. And all of a sudden, he hears this voice from Jezebel, the queen, says, I'm going to kill you. And what's she do? And she's being like, God's on my side. He's like, oh, no, I'm gone. And he runs. And he's looking for God. He feels lost. He feels like he's alone because he forgets that earlier there were 500 prophets that had not, 500, I forget the number, but there's at least 500 prophets that have not bowed to Baal that were hidden in a cave. But he feels like he's alone. And he basically was saying, God, I'm not going to, I want to die. Takes a nap, gets woke up, there's some food, some drink, God gives it to him. He eats it, drinks it, guess what he does? Goes right back to sleep. Sometimes when you're depressed, it's okay to take a nap. Because sometimes you just, your just body's wore out. He gets up again, and he gives him food, and the angel says, hey, the journey's long for you, go on. He goes to this cave, and this is where we pick up. He's waiting to hear from God, there's a voice that says, Elijah, why are you here? And verse 11 says, the Lord said, go out. And stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord, what? Was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But what does it say? But the Lord was what? Not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But guess what? The Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came, what does it say? A what? Gentle whisper. You got any teachers in here? I know we got at least one, Betsy. You got any other teachers in here? I used to be one. There, one in the back. Okay, classroom management 101. Cla the class is getting loud. Guess what? The louder you get, the louder they get. Parents, isn't that what usually happens? The louder you get at your kids, what happens? The louder they get. But I, I've always been impressed, and it's always been interesting. And I've used this a few times. Like, you got the, you know, clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. But here's what's, what's great is usually when the teachers are saying that, their voice is just, just like this. Sometimes it's like, raise your hand if you can hear me. I've done that a lot. Raise your hand if you can hear me. 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 Thank you, thank you. I, I, all right, I, some of you started getting it. I did that on purpose. But I would do that, and all of a sudden, like, the one or two kids who were closer to me, I would not raise my voice. It would be, raise your hand if you can hear me. They'd start raising their hands. But guess what? As they started doing it, other people started going, they see something, they start listening. And guess what? They start hearing because they're getting quiet. Sometimes the answer that we're looking for from God comes in the quiet. Let me say that again. Sometimes the answer you're looking for from God comes in the quiet. Just because it does not come the way that you want it to does not mean that God did not answer. Just because it, just because it didn't come the way that you wanted it doesn't mean God isn't speaking and God isn't moving. Flip side of that, just because it comes in the way you want it, when you want it, how you want it doesn't mean it's from God. That's why we have to spend time in our word, spend time in his word, spend time in his presence so we can learn how to discern his voice. How many knows the enemy will lie to you? The devil, the devil's a liar. He's the father of lies. He will lie to you. That's all he knows to do is lie. So during this busy season, this hustle and bustle of going and making sure everybody's got the right gifts take time to slow down and listen for the voice of God and guess what if you do that he's going to reveal it to you he's going to reveal himself in in ways you wouldn't expect look for these opportunities 
in the small ways in which God is revealing himself, that Jesus is revealing himself during this season. Look for opportunities that you can join in in what he's doing to be a part of his revelation to the world. Because guess what? We're called to be like Christ. We're called to go and be the light. In fact, if you go check out, did I give you the scripture? Let me see. Yeah, Matthew 5.16, which is on our third point. This is what Jesus says. He says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works, your good deeds. And what do they do? They glorify who? The Father in heaven. Why? Because our point, third point is this, is that there is hope that cannot be overcome. There is hope that cannot be overcome. We want to look for those opportunities. We want to look in those places where God is moving. Dare I say that God is blessing, and we want to be a part of that. Sometimes we, we want to take our things to God and say, God, bless it. And God's like, I'm blessing something better. Why don't you come here? I'm blessing this instead, and it's better. But we're like, no, bless it. Jesus is like, come here, bless it. God's like, here, and we're like stubborn kids, so bless it. There's a story of a kid, um, man, he, he had a, his dad was taking him, he was going to take him to the store and get him a dodgeball, right? And he got him, I mean, he was getting this one right here, and this it's the best of the line. All the kid looks, he goes, but I want the orange one. And it's like, this one's better. I want the orange one. Or how about the little girl who's got this little little stuffed bear that's all ratted and tore up. And the dad's got a better one behind him. He's like, just give it to me. He's like, no, no. Or better yet, I got a, I got a necklace. I got a $1,000 pearl necklace. Now, if you got a $1,000 pearl necklace, we need to talk because we got a lot of things we could be doing at the church with that $1,000. I'm just saying. But sometimes we want to hold on to the things that don't amount to much when God wants to bless us in bigger ways. And you know why God wants to bless you? It's not so we can hoard it. It's so that we can take it and bless others. You want an opportunity? You want to know a way that you can make a difference for somebody this season? Pray about giving to our, our outreach. we got about two more weeks of this, of our Christmas outreach. And I'm going to tell you right now, because of your generosity, I was going to let probably Pastor Matt tell us at the at the end for the announcers. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, though. We still have two weeks left, but we as a church family, because of your generous giving, we're, we're going to be able to help three families because we've already raised over $3,000 to help these families out. So, that, yeah, go ahead, applaud that. It's because of your generosity. It's because you said, you know what, I want to help somebody celebrate Christmas. Because what does the Bible say? It's more blessed to give than to receive. And when you do this, when we do things like that, when we find out where God's moving and we go there and we decide to get, on, get involved in his plan, you're going to see mighty things happen. Here's some other ways that you can, as the worship team or whoever's doing responses, doing, leading us, as they're coming up, here's some other ways. Look, Christmas, the holiday season is really rough for families, especially families that have lost people. There are people, there are adults, older adults in the nursing homes who are lonely. There are people who have experienced tragic loss. In fact, we have a family in our church that this past week, on Tuesday, unexpectedly lost, a mother lost her youngest child, 26-year-old son. I don't, I don't, I don't grasp, I can't understand that. And I know that they're hurting. But what you can do is you can find ways to be with those people who need help, who need just the gift of presence. Just being there. Look for those ways. Because as John pointed out in verse 5, there's light that shines in the darkness. And darkness has not overcome it. Chris Kringle came in the middle, right at the end of Thanksgiving, in the middle of the busy time of the year. All about commercialism, like got to sell, got to sell, got to go, got to buy, got to buy. But what did he do? He started changing things by telling parents. One kid's like, I want this certain fire truck. And the mom's like, are we telling him he's going to get that fire truck? I looked everywhere. Macy's ain't got it. Hey, but you can go over to this other store across town that has it for cheaper. What? Why are you sending people all the way? Because it's not about buying and getting things. 
It's about giving. When Jesus came down, he said it's not about getting things. It's about me giving myself to you, and I want you to do the same. He came to set aright the wrong views that were there about him. Jesus is the light that breaks through the darkness, and his light breaks through the darkness of despair, hopelessness, and even sin. When he came, he came as a baby. And here's the thing, babies are small. But when a baby smiles and giggles and laughs, doesn't that room light up? Doesn't that room light up? Look, February's coming real soon, and my baby's going to be born. I'm excited to meet him. And I'm excited, I'm not excited about changing the diapers. I'm not excited about the randomly getting up every couple hours to make sure he's fed. But I'm excited to hold on to him and see him smile. Because babies, even though they're small, they have a way of lighting up the room. And here's the thing. Light, no matter how small, lightens up a room. The darkness cannot stay where there's a little bit of light. And it's not like a tug of war. You turn on a light, guess what happens? The darkness goes, whoosh. It's gone. When you take the love and light of Jesus into the world and you share it through acts of kindness, there's going to be some darkness in people's lives that are going to transform. It's just going to disappear and they're going to transform. So let's pray. And I'm going to invite you to stand with me as, a, as Trey prepares to lead us. And if you need a time for prayer, it's I mean, we got... Pastor Matt and Miss Tammy will come up and pray with you. I'll come down here. And here are a couple things. Like, if you don't know Christ, if you're, if you're in the loneliness and the darkness of sin, and you're like, I need hope, and I want to live a life of freedom, they'll pray for you. Pastor Matt, would you come on, come on up here? Uh, they'll pray for you. If you have been experiencing loneliness, like maybe you are a Christian, but things have just been seem a little out of whack, this is your opportunity to say, you know what, God, I want to slow down, and I want to, I want to get one-on-one with you and hear from you. So let's pray this. Let's pray during this time. I'm going to pray and then Trey's going to lead us in a response. God, my prayer is that something that I said in my, <laughs> what I would call sometimes rambling, God, I, I just pray that you spoke. And I pray that people's lives were touched and changed. And God, I pray that they don't see a Christmas uh, movie. I pray that they see the gospel message. That it's not about Santa Claus. But it's about the Christ child. It's about Jesus Christ. And how we as your, as your believers, God, can, as your children, can shine the light of Jesus. God, if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you, I pray, Father, that you will pull on their hearts and draw them to you for salvation. If that's you, if you feel a tugging on your heart, and you're like, you know that you need to get right with Jesus, you need to lay down your surrender, surrender your yes to him, I cannot give you the words you have to say them from, from yourself, from your heart, and you have to mean them. Because if I give them to you, there's always a chance you're just repeating. But here's the thing. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, He's there, He will save us. We had confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. So if that's you right now, you, you don't have to say it out loud like I am. You can just whisper it saying, God, I need you to save me. That's as simple as it is. But you have to say it from your heart in your own words. God, I pray that if there's anybody here that needs you, that you would just draw them to you. God, I pray for those of us that already have a relationship, God, with you. If, there's, if it's been strained, God, I pray that we will slow down and focus on you and just come back and listen to you. And we're going to just praise your name, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You give.
give life, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord, it's your breath, it's your breath, and I so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And great are you, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. And great are you, Lord. And on the earth, and on the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I have nothing else before a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Oh, except for a heart singing, hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. So get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. So get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I've nothing.
nothing else fit for a king, oh, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So I throw up my hands and I praise yeah. you again yeah. and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Want to, as, we, as we conclude, if you need prayer, come on up. We'll pray with you. Um, as we're getting ready to close down, just a couple things just want to remind you about real quick. If you are a guest with us, we would love for you to take that Connect card, fill it out, let us know if you need prayer, how, you know, anything like that, uh, and just drop it in our black boxes back here to my right, your left, in the back. That's also a place where you can... Worship in another form by the giving of offering and your tithes. Now, this is primarily for our faith family, who those who say celebration is my home. However, if God lays it on your heart to give, I'm never going to stand in the way of somebody wanting to give. You know why? I don't want to. I don't want to stand in the way of God blessing you for being obedient. So, if you feel led to, drop it off there. Church family, do that. Uh, also, if you want to give to the outreach, Christmas outreach, make sure you mark, uh, write that down, mark it there. You can also do it online. You can do it a couple different ways. Like I said, we want to bless people, show them the love of Christ, let them know that they're not forgotten during this season. And again, because of your generosity, we've actually also, the last couple weeks, have been able to help people who have been in need. We've been able to get some rooms for people who needed it and things like that. So thank you guys for that. Also, guests, make sure you stop by our, our guest services. We have a gift for you. Uh, I'll be out there, Pastor Matt uh, may be out there in a minute, if, we're, if not we're going to let him pray, but come back there, we got you a gift bag we want to give you, and we just love you guys, uh, last thing, youth, parents, youth and parents, Trey wants to have a meeting next Sunday after service, uh, right after service, he's going to talk a little bit, he's got some things he wants to talk about with you guys, we'll let you guys know uh, what's going on, so what he's going to do, so we love you guys, let's pray, let's bless it, and let's have a wonderful day, God we thank you. We thank you for showing up. We thank you for moving in the hearts and in the lives of people and in our lives, God. We thank you that you are a present, personal God who is with us. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving us. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you would open our eyes this week to the ways that we can be a blessing to somebody and show them your love and your light. Lord Jesus, be with us all. Bless the food we're all going to eat when we go out to wherever we're going. And just bring us back here together in your name next time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You don't want to miss next week. Trey's going to be speaking on another movie. You want to come check out what it is. See you guys later.